Fishbowl Banker Television, brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Coldwell Banker, every day until it's sold. St. Croix Rod, the best rods on earth. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Welcome to Fishful Thinker Television. We are spring trout fishing. It's April in Colorado, and we are out right at ice out. The lake we're on here is called Parvin Lake. It just iced out. We've been fishing for about five minutes, and we got one here. And so we'll see how it goes. As you folks can see, it's really windy here today. And uh, it's real bright sun, high pressure. Like I said, the lake just iced out. And uh, since it is windy, that tells me to bring a lipless crankbait. We brought that, and I have got a big old trout. And unfortunately, I foul hooked him. So we're going to have to see what happens here. But it's a big old brown. Let me get my net here. So stay tuned. This is going to get to be an interesting show before we even get started here yet, folks. <music> I did foul hook this fish, so we we uh, got a little lucky there. Come here, buddy. Come here, fish. Come on, fish. All right. <laughs> All right. So welcome back to Fishful Thinker. We start the show off with a big old hook. Now we're gonna get this fish out of the net and show you what we're fishing for here today. What we've got here. I'm going to be careful about him here. Come here, fish. Come here, fish. We've got a huge spawning rainbow right here. And this lake that we're fishing is well known to have big rainbows. Now that's a monster. And you can see he's got no fins right here. You see his fins are all rubbed off. That's because we're gonna go ahead and get him put back, I think, at this point. The, uh, the reason he's got no fins is this is an experimental lake. And they, the Division of Wildlife here in Colorado let me let him go in the wind here. We're gonna let him out of here real quick and then we'll talk a little bit more about him. There you go. Now that's a big male rainbow right there. Now the lake we're fishing at here in Colorado is, a, is an experimental lake. They use this lake to, to try different strains of rainbows which will ultimately be stocked in various places around the state. That fish was a prime example. All the fins rubbed off. Those are big broodstock fish. They catch those fish, they milt them, they artificially inseminate them, and they hatch them in other places. Big giant trout like that. Lots and lots of them in here. It's kind of a neat place to fish because you never know what you're going to catch. There's hofer rainbows, there's tiger trout, there's a whole variety of different kinds of trout in here. So it's April in Colorado. It's cold. The lake iced out within literally the last couple of days. My fingers are now frozen after handling that fish. But wind blowing, water temperatures are cold. Still got him to bite the lipless crankbait, one of my favorite all-time trout baits. Got a little lucky on that one. He bumped it. I set the hook, foul hooked him. But uh, either way, we got him. A couple things. Most folks that think of throwing a lipless crankbait for trout, or don't think of throwing a lipless crankbait for trout, I should say. But uh, if folks that do fish a lipless crankbait, it's most commonly associated with bass fishing. And typically, it's thrown on casting tackle. I'm throwing it on a seven foot medium power, fast action St. Croix rod, and the 15 pound Fireline braid. And the reason I am is because then I can throw this bait a long way, still get the hook set, and also because I can throw it straight into the wind or straight downwind or anything else, uh, it, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference at the angle of which I throw the bait. So the, if I had a bait caster, throwing it in the heavy wind like this can get interesting. But Whenever I have tannin in the water, which is basically from pine, typically it's associated with pine or some kind of leaf matter in the lake, and it makes your lake look, I look like iced tea. Well, that's what we have here, and so gold is always a good choice. All of the fish in the lake will take on a little bit of a gold hue when there's tannin in the water, and that includes any bait fish that may be present, and gold, gold chrome can be a good choice there. 
Now that is throwing, I'm able to throw this bait with the spinning rod something close to 75 yards. There's 110 yards of fire line on this Sauron reel and I can throw almost all of it off straight into the wind with a seven foot rod. The thing about the lipless crankbait for trout and the, it, or the lipless crankbait in general is it's such a great way to fish in the wind and anywhere in the western United States wind is always a problem. Doesn't matter whether you go to Wyoming or Kansas or Colorado or Wind is a high percentage probability, especially in the spring. We're in late April right now, and uh, very, very good possibility of running into wind wherever you go. So it doesn't matter if I'm fishing for crappies or pike or anywhere in between, uh, a lipless crankbait's gonna go with me. And it might be a three quarter ounce one, it might be a half ounce one like we're throwing today. Uh, generally speaking, if I want a real fast bait, I like a rattle trap. There are some other companies that make baits that are better in more of a vertical situation, but day in and day out, I like a rattle trap. Now one of the things when I'm walking around a lake and fishing for trout is the fact that I will do a lot of fan casting. I'll work an angle where you're here, then here, then here, then here, and just mix it up and work my angles. The reason being is trout are so pelagic, meaning that they roam a lot. Unless you really have something to pin them into a spot like current, they will just roam quite a bit. And because they roam so much, it's really hard to tell exactly where you're gonna get bit in a lake situation. If I had a real distinct drop off or something like that, maybe that would be a key thing. But the reality is it's more about covering a bunch of water. Since a lipless crankbait like this rattle trap is so loud, I don't wanna make five or 10 or 12 casts to the same spot. I wanna make a cast or two and just kinda of work my way around, work it like a giant pie in front of me. Now that is a pretty female rainbow trout right there. Now we're on a really windy day and uh, like we keep talking about, the wind's howling and we're using non-traditional trout tactics to catch them. Now that's probably a 20 inch or so female rainbow. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll give you a quick look at this one. Now look at that fish in the sun. If I can get a hold of this net here. Look at that, that's a beautiful rainbow. And since, uh, since we're trying to not hurt them and let them all go here today, I'll give you a real quick look as we let her go. Well, no, she don't wanna play. I'm not gonna mess with her. Here you go, we're gonna roll her up and let her out of this net. But there's kind of interesting catch here. There you go, girl. Nice, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Real, real interesting thing because as you can see, the wind's ripping on the lake. Yes, the lake iced out in the last few days, but the fish can be active even in the wind. Let me show you this bait right here. This is a completely non-traditional trout bait. If you give that a look, if I can get a hold of it, it's actually a beetle spin made by Johnson. It's a beetle spin arm, and then I've got a heavy jig head on it, a relatively heavy 3 8 ounce, or, uh, yeah, 3 8 ounce jig head and then a little four inch unscented plastic body because this lake is artificial flies and there's only can't use any scent. So it's an unscented plastic straight tail body. With the wind blowing like it is, this little blade spinning will give me the flash that I'm picking up from the sun, the vibration that it, just the blade spinning in the water creates and allows fish to find my bait. This environment, a lot of wind, a lot of noise, a little tannin in the water, flash, vibration, but a natural profile. Got it done on that trout. The rest of the package on my little modified beetle spin, I've got a seven foot medium light St. Croix Legend Elite rod, very, very tippy rod. I could throw it a long ways in the wind. To make sure that I have uh, plenty of casting and hook setting ability, I've got eight pound test fire line right here, fire line tracer braid that is. And then I've got a little Sauron reel right there to make the whole thing real smooth drag. That reel's designed for super line, which I have wound on it like that. So that's the whole package. Long throws, plenty of hook setting power, plus not too heavy, a fish that size is an absolute blast on it. Good fun. One of the most important things in my opinion in fishing in wind, especially in a lake situation, is to fish into the wind. Even if I was in my bass boat working down the bank or something, most likely I'm gonna be working my baits into the wind, and that's because the fish are most likely gonna feed into the wind as well. All the food that is drifting is drifting this way, Certainly the trout that we're fishing for are very accustomed to feeding into current. Obviously they live in the river. So we're making most of our presentations upwind or crosswind. Very few of our presentations are we gonna make downwind. 
I'll always try it a time or two just in case, but most of the time I've found consistency comes by throwing into the wind. Part of fishing in the wind that you gotta keep in mind is you've really got a balanced tackle. If you're trying to throw a real light lure in the wind, you better have a real light rod and, and vice versa. Really important that your tackle be balanced correctly if you're gonna fish and try to cast effectively in the wind, particularly with lures. Uh, we make sure that our we pick our lure first, then the line that's most appropriate for that lure, and then the rod that goes with that line and lure combination. It's generally how I set them all up. And you can see the wind pushes that wind current along and starts foaming the lake up and pushing wind current like that. And then that wind current flowing parallel down this bank we're standing on. I'm fishing parallel to that bank as much as possible. And uh, it, it's just a really good spot for trout to roam up and down. Even though I don't know much about this lake, I know it's got deep water right over here, shallow water over there, wind blowing hard along here. Uh, good spot to take a swing at them. Had bites, we're just not getting them all to stay pinned. Still sitting in the same spot. We have not moved. We've been fishing for like an hour and a half. We've now caught another trout. This time we got a, another female rainbow and we got her on the lipless crankbait. And she ate that bait. Come here, girl. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. That's what we're looking for right there. Okay, so we got another big, pretty female rainbow here. My hands are all wet. We got the waves blowing up on us because we're fishing in the wind. And there we go. Beautiful rainbow right there. Nice, long, probably a female, judging by the shape of her face. Another one ate the lipless crankbait. Now, now I'm gonna get her back in the water here. I don't see a lot of point in holding her out. Man, that water is cold. See you, baby. Very nice, very nice. Another one on the lipless crankbait. Wind might be an issue all over the west, but it doesn't mean you can't catch fish. And actually some of the toughest days I've ever had is when the wind didn't blow. So balanced tackle, loud baits, shiny baits, fast baits, good ways to get bites in the wind and definitely getting it done today. Here at Fishful Thinker, one of the most key components in all of our angling is the use of braided fishing line. Could be Fireline braid, Fireline tracer braid like this, or, or any of the other super lines available on the market. And they all have one key feature. They have very, very low stretch and they're extremely durable. But that also means they're extremely difficult to cut. If you're going to use braided lines, I recommend the use of a plier with a carbide insert in here for cutting that braided line. If you go after it with your regular pliers, you're not going to have a good clean cut on your braided line and that's not going to be any good at all. A pair of scissors will work as well, but for an all-purpose tool, a pair of pliers to remove hooks from fish with a carbide cutter will make your day in the water as efficient as possible. Working across the face of this dam, it's about the windiest spot I can find on the lake to fish, which is counterintuitive for a lot of folks, but it's working for us. And, uh, and so here's the deal, I'm trying to work different depth ranges depending on my light. Instead of moving lures, or, or excuse me, moving uh, spots a whole bunch, I do know there's fish here and I do love fishing where the wind's blowing in. I know we have access to deep water, we've got a, a 90 degree turn in the lake. So that's going to funnel food into here and blow it all into here. And so this is going to be a good spot to fish. So rather than move around a bunch, uh, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to rotate through a variety of baits. Everything from that little spinner arm that we've been throwing to the spoon we threw a little bit to this lipless crankbait to a couple of different jerk baits. And they're allowing me to work different depth ranges. And so I just keep mixing up baits and, and uh, every so often we get a bite. Trout being roamers like they are, it's a safe bet that they're going to come surfing, circling through here at various times, so constantly get some fresh fish to look at. Now, as, as we keep talking about, anywhere in the western United States, and really anywhere in the country, but especially here in the wide open west, uh, wind is always going to be an issue, and this, this is a nice fish right here, all right, now. 
We own another hog. Look at this. <laughs> oh my God, this thing's a toad. Where's my nets right behind me? Oh man, what a fish. Look at this thing. Okay, come here, come here. Oh my goodness, look at this one. Oh, come here, baby. Oh man, it's a giant. <laughs> let me get down here and get her in the water. I'm gonna let this fish sit here and get his breath back. It's obviously a huge spawned out female. Let me flip her over, let her get her wits about her. Oh man, this thing is a pig. I am not kidding you, this thing is a pig. We've just been sitting here making the same cast into the wind over and over and over again. Either on the dam, straight up the bank. It continues to work for us. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and get this one out of the net for sure. we got to look at this one. She looks like she's doing all right here. That's what I love about these nets is she can sit there and not be, not be bound up by the net itself so she can breathe and, and uh, get her wits about her without me having to hold her. But we definitely going to pick this one up and get a quick look at this one. All right, now, how about that for a big old giant hen rainbow? <laughs> Beautiful, don't want to keep her out of the water, so we're gonna get her back down here real graceful. There you go, honey, come here. Don't you roll around this way and smile. There we go, let her get her, get her bearings back. Gorgeous fish right there. There she goes. You know, we always talk on Fishful Thinker about developing our pattern. When patterns set a set of circumstances that you can recognize and then duplicate. Well, pattern keep details can be where the wind's blowing or whatever. So here in this spot that we've been milking so diligently for a couple hours now, uh, our pattern is built. We know the direction the cast needs to be. We know we need to be casting them roughly 30 to 45 degrees into the wind. We know the two baits. We can switch back and forth if they like. I know about the speed it needs to be at, and it just click it, and it's just absolutely awesome. That's why you develop a pattern. If I was to go move from here and change something fundamentally up, I'd have to start from square one. If you're fishing for other species, white bass, stripers, striped bass, anything like that, uh, certainly walleyes will go to windblown areas. Uh, smallmouth love to go to windblown areas for sure. Trout, it's been just very well documented. Any of the western reservoirs, the, the, the South Park reservoirs in Colorado, any of the Wyoming reservoirs, when the wind blows in, or where the wind is blowing in, is definitely a key pattern piece that can help you catch fish. And it's been all but unfishable and so at some points today, like serious wind, but that's okay, it's worth it. Now it does get hard to present your baits in the wind, no doubt about that. Tight line, real fast casts are the deal. The more lure speed you can generate or line speed if you were fly fishing, the better off you'd be. Here comes the wind again. Come on, baby. And this really is a chunk and wind ordeal. When you're fishing in the wind, especially when you're fishing in the windy spots like we are on purpose, you can you really expect that your fish are there feeding. That's what they're there for. So it's more about getting your bait in front of them and maybe making it run from them than anything else. If you're fly fishing, it's probably more about just getting your bait in front of them. Because of fly being a more obvious match to the hatch type thing. If you're throwing big baits like we are, bait probably needs to run from them. Nice wind. Come on, jig coming right down the break. The spinner coming right down the break. Oh, come on. When it gets close to shore, I always reel it up real quick. That way it looks like it's running through the bank. So we've been in the same spot. We've caught everything in the same spot all day and are all morning and you know, we had not been here that long, but we've caught everything in the same exact spot. And the reason being is like I said before, I, I, just, I just fully expect that these trout being pelagic uh, will continue to roam and this is one of the most prime feeding spots on the lake. So I don't see a lot of point in going looking for fish. I really expect fish to continue to come to me. Just keep mixing the baits up. Still beating up the wind. 
going back and forth between baits just like we're talking about and I got a nice one this time. Look at this one. Wow. Who says fishing in the wind is no good? What do I do with my net here? Uh, a lot of people want to go home when you get out in the wind and the wind starts blowing, but that's why we're staying on the lake right there, baby. Look at that thing. That's a big old rainbow right there. And let me get this rod set down and uh, then I'll show her to you. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Get some line out here. All right, so we got her unhooked. I'll show you the, the jig spinner here in a minute. It's the same one we caught the one on just a little bit ago, but, but wow, what a fish. This one's a hog right there. Now, I'll get her out of the net and show her to you. Come here. Woo, buddy, look at that thing. <laughs> That's a nice big dripping rainbow right there. Beautiful fish. Let me put her back here. See ya outstanding right there that's beautiful now next time you're on the lake wind starts blowing don't cry don't panic don't run for home get out some noisy baits some flashy baits some vibrating baits make some noise fish fast trout don't care bass don't care pike don't care if the wind blows as long as you don't go where the wind's blowing in put your balance tackle together and get her done so that's been Fishful Thinker for this week. Hopefully you've enjoyed the show. Get some confidence to get out in the wind yourself. And we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week. Woo, what a fish. Oh, that's what happened. The two hooks caught each other. Man, you got lucky I was that fish stayed on. Oh, <laughs> Did I mention how lucky I got with that one staying on? <laughs> Oh, that was fun, that was fun. Those guys that are hiding in the water earn whatever they just got.